Here in Fauquier County Public Schools, our goal is to ensure that every student, no matter their disability, race, gender, or socioeconomic condition, receives what they need in order to be successful, and we are committed to this. The pandemic heightened our awareness of just how valuable our teachers have been in ensuring student success. In March of 2020, our school doors were closed and education norms around the world changed almost overnight. Faced with this incredible challenge, our teachers and staff responded. From adapting to new ways of teaching and learning, to keeping students safe and well, to keeping students fed, the list goes on and on. Our staff pulled off a miracle. We cannot underestimate the impact of our educators on our students each and every day. To evaluate our school division's accomplishments, we ask ourselves two questions. Are our kids safe and are our kids learning? And I'm proud to answer yes to both. In terms of safety, last year we outfitted buses and drivers with safety features and equipment. We served 1,626,155 meals and 279,544 snacks. We continue to install security vestibules in our buildings. Our COVID response included the provision of PPE, plasma ionization, increased custodial staff, and cleaning supplies. We now have fully staffed SRO and SSO programs. And did you know, Fauquier County Public Schools boasts the largest armed SSO program in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And how about our incredible school nurses who've worked tirelessly to keep our kids healthy? As for learning, we expanded our programs and course offerings. We offered a summer academy attended by 1,687 of our students. We opened the FCPS Virtual Academy, serving kids K-12 who thrive in a virtual environment. Our staff logged over 57,831 hours of professional learning. Oh, and how could I forget? Our graduation rate for the class of 2021 stands at an all-time high of 96.2%, one of the highest in the state. Equally as important is the performance of our subgroups, all well above state average. We didn't accomplish any of this by accident. Rather, our entire staff, K-12, through works intentionally to ensure that every student receives what they need in order to be successful. The bottom line? Our educators are nothing short of extraordinary. And now is the time to show them how much we value them. We must keep folks in our school division and pay them what they're worth. Did you know? Virginia consistently ranks as one of the top states in the nation for quality of education, earning the four spot out of 50 in one recent ranking. Meanwhile, according to VEA, Virginia ranks 32nd out of 51 in terms of compensation. We are providing a much better than average education for kids, yet we are paying them much less. And something is wrong with that. What's more, average salaries for FCPS teachers fall below the state and national averages. When looking at salaries compared with surrounding school divisions, it's obvious that we need to be more competitive. While we may not be able to offer as much as the divisions to the north and east due to their larger tax base, we must be extremely competitive with the rest. On top of all that, we happen to be in the midst of a national teacher shortage crisis. So what's the plan? How can we address compensation so we can attract and retain high quality staff? In order to create my proposed budget, I seek input from staff and community stakeholders while following the priorities of the school board. The school board consistently prioritizes safety and security and remains committed to fixing teacher compression. Now is the time to aggressively combat teacher compression. Therefore, this budget proposal takes every dollar not tied to something else and applies it to compensation. In this proposed budget, our number one priority is to address a compression on the teacher pay scale. On a healthy salary scale, salaries increase over time according to years of service. When compression exists, segments of the scale flatten or dip, and salaries are stuck well below where they should be. Compression occurs from not providing consistent step increases. Once compression exists, it gets harder and harder to catch people up. Every year as we put this off, 
We get further and further behind and it gets more and more expensive to fix. The board began to address compression three years ago, but now we have a real opportunity to address it. Now is the time to fix teacher compression once and for all. Compression can't be fixed by providing an across the board salary increase. Rather, compression is fixed by targeting the compressed segments of the scale. Our number two priority is to provide a 5% salary increase for all staff and finish market adjustments begun a few years ago. We must remain competitive in the market for all positions. Three years ago, we made great progress on many of the needed market adjustments. But in order to attract and retain quality staff, we need to finish the market adjustments we started. Now is also the time to provide a 5% raise for staff. This is something the state will help pay for. And although this will help in our efforts to keep competitive in the market, surrounding school divisions will also provide raises. So as our salaries increase, so will the market averages. My proposed budget aggressively addresses both teacher compression and compensation for all staff. In fact, under my proposal, the average salary increase for teachers for FY 2023 would be 13%, and the cumulative average salary increase in two years would be 18%. So why now? The state revenue picture is very good. In fact, we're set to receive $8 million in additional state funding this coming year. Governor Northam's budget is very favorable for public schools. It offers some money, match money, for school divisions that offer a 5% raise the next two years. Our current enrollment is approximately 10,700, and we anticipate we'll have more kids coming back to us. We receive more state funding as a result of higher enrollment. The VRS rate is static, so we won't have to cover an increase there. All four state funding indicators went up, leading to more state money for our locality and our LCI, which is our local composite index of ability to pay, went down, providing us with approximately an additional $800,000 in state money. Certainly, fixing compression and addressing compensation comes with a cost. Our ask is $7.4 million from the county, and our contribution is $8 million. We believe this is so important that we are taking every dollar not tied to something else and applying it to compensation. In fact, 87% of the budget goes to compensation and 75% of total expenditures go to instruction. This opportunity doesn't come around very often. I've been in education for 31 years. This is one of those moments when the stars are aligning. State funding levels are the highest we've ever seen. The door is open and our opportunity is right now. Once we can get our salaries at market, it's a matter of staying competitive and maintaining is much less expensive than trying to catch up. We realize all county agencies are important. We're simply advocating for our students and our staff. The community recognizes their value and the impact our educators have on our students. We've asked so much of them for the past two years, but we really need your help now. Imagine if we could fix compression, and we can, if we act now. This is an opportunity to get on market and end compression. This is the time and our folks deserve it.